We are live on Facebook, I believe. So, welcome James to Chess Garage Mark. Cafe. And we start off without a full crew, but with enough of a crew to have to be quality. So, we're ready to go. And uh, last night, Colin did not join us on uh, Medical Mondays, but we talked about a lot of the same stuff that we're going to talk about today because that's what's going on. And I'm sure that uh, 420 post last week and this week, Rick will be talking about a lot of the same stuff. And I'm sure that on Planet Green Trees on Thursday, some of the stuff will be discussed because it's pertinent. And uh, the MORE Act is going to be voted on by Congress pretty soon. Uh, we're going to be joined by somebody else, so I cannot tell who it is because it could be Adam. It's Deb, I think. We already have Deb. Oh, um, I don't know that one. Oh, no, it's probably Gus. See, I don't know. We'll, we, will, we will determine who that is when they show themselves. But oh no, there it is! <laughs> <laughs> Look at those packages, man. Nice. Oh, 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 like, yeah. Awesome, huh? So uh, I got. I got a. I got to fix it. We'll, we'll get. To, we'll get to those packages in a second. Look at that. Thank you so much. So uh, Mexico, and it is Adam, in fact, joining us. Mexico is to legalize. Taken a, a very uh, by recommendation of the World Health Organization, and that no could implicitly uh, recognize cannabis as having some medicinal value for the first time. That organization, and then later on, we're gonna have, this photo here it is. We got it. We have Gus. I'm just staring at Jamie's package to the whole broadcast. It took me forever to fucking pull it up. I can't get myself to go sideways for some reason. I'm my camera won't. It takes forever over. to pull up those packages. Yeah. yeah. Kind of weighty. Rick's is resting like right. I can hide Rick's with. My <laughs> I want that shirt. There's, I want that. There's no hiding the other one though. But uh, uh, what did I say last? I forgot. Gus Resign is going to join us. Adam Brook is here with us now, which is cool, Mr. Hashbash. And last night on Medical Mondays, he was excited about a uh, new study that was recently uh, published, I believe, and it's uh, concluded that there could be some. Uh, some preemptive, he's been prophylactic uh, uh, use of cannabis in order to circumvent some of the respiratory issues with uh, COVID. And obviously, Gus from uh, the School of Pharm the College of Pharmacy at U of M would be a good person to kind of talk to about that and see what he's got to say. Other than that, we'll stare at the. Oh, good. I brought it down so that we don't, we don't have a distraction. No, I didn't bring it down. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's just well, shut I, off for some reason. You know, I'm going to have to fix it. There it is. Oh, I love this. this now is... I'm like sideways on it. Uh, uh, something's fucked up. Mm. Don't see it, you now. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. Something's fucked up with it. Jim, Jim, better late than never, Selene. There it is. Look at him come up the river. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, so uh, there's a couple things going on too. This is one year anniversary for adult sales. Don't use cannabis sales in this year. Uh, Where's yeah. the bodies? One, yeah, one uh, one year ago today. Uh, Adam, you were out of town actually, because I remember our, we were with John and you called him from somewhere. Yeah, I was in uh, Amsterdam. Right. December, December 6th is the uh, first official day of legalization. Right. You know, the so first sales took place a year ago today. The first, like the December 6th was the was the implementation of the effective date. So that's the anniversary of the 2018 act. Okay, I understand. Yeah. You're referring the first, to legalization. the sales in which, in which you, myself, and Ryan Basor were at uh, Arbor's Wellness, Arbor's Wellness participated yeah. in those first sales. And that was really cool. Uh, John John Sinclair gifted me one of the joints that he actually uh, purchased with Ryan, and I have also I made the second purchase legally in the state of Michigan, and I have those joints too. So we have so some not to participate in any of the first purchases. And one year later, I'm proud to say I've never purchased that. any legal cannabis. <laughs> so, but but I was going to ask what, what you alluded to before, Adam, which is we've had a year of, of adult use 
sales now in Michigan. Is anybody aware of any additional problems that it's caused that prohibition has not? And if you did, you know, let us know. But otherwise, the Moore Act is going to be voted on, and it, and it's only going to go so far as the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, it, it will not pass Senate, it won't be signed into law, but it will be the furthest that any meaningful legislation has ever gone. Do people find that to be important or or just uh, uselessly kind of symbolic at this point? Well, think? let's let's start off the room here. I'll tell you, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, it sometimes takes several years of having something introduced before it becomes law. The Moore Act contains some relief issues for the COVID-19 crisis, which you need right away. But it also includes a lot of what some of the Republicans would describe as pork, some pet projects as well. The Moore Act is important from our perspective, but the fact is, as Jamie mentioned, it's not going to get passed by the Senate this year. So as far as symbolic gestures go, it would be a, a nice gesture, but <clears throat> I wish that we'd have a, a, a Senate composition that would make it more meaningful. And perhaps we will after the Georgia election. Let's go to Adam Brook, our guest. Adam, same question. Passing the Moore Act by the House of Representatives, is that a milestone for us, or is it just so much passe? I think it's a bunch of people jumping on the boat or jumping on the train. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, where were these people in the past? Because most of them aren't pro-cannabis. It's the fact that it's part of a bigger bill that they're willing to vote for. It. Right. Yeah, people wouldn't come to our cause because of medical reasons or because of social justice reasons. They only came to our cause when they realized there was dollars attached to it. Um, Deborah Young, uh, keeper of the packages. So I got them both, and you know it was hard to, to locate this photo. I just got it like two minutes ago. Not I've been hard searching to locate for like the packages. To be clear, no, the packages are front and center. That's for sure. Right. Um, you know, I agree with 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 uh, Adam. I I think that politicians, this is very low priority. They pander to us to get our vote. I mean. It's attached to something else. That's the only way that anybody's going to endorse it. These are a bunch of people who don't give a fuck about cannabis. I mean, we know this. We know this. This is not new news for us. So, I mean, I, I'll take it if I can. You know, anything we can get is cool, but we have to keep pushing them. They're not looking out for us. Colin, what would you say to that? Do you think that's, a, that's probably right? Oftentimes, there are a lot of Johnny-come-latelys that just want to attach themselves to something that's becoming successful in order to, you know, generate success for themselves without actually doing anything. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of it's all um, just symbolic in a way. It's just, um, you know, we know that it wasn't wouldn't be even like heard in the Senate or not signed into law by this president. But I think it's it's just kind of cool that uh, like the, the House of Representatives is doing it in Trump's presidency. Um, I think it's like a little last insult. Uh, cannabis isn't like everyone's number one issue. It's usually like not even like top 10. I mean, for us, it's up there. But for the vast general public, it's like number 15, 20. Um, so, I mean, it's I'm glad that it's like getting heard. And it does take a while. Um, I know that John Dingle, um, he introduced a type of like Medicare for all bill or healthcare plan back in the 1950s. So, you know, sometimes bills take forever to like be uh, put, implemented and, you know, pass both houses and, and signed into law by president. That's good. So. What about you, Jim? Uh, uh, you've heard a bunch of different positions here. Uh, you're on the riverside right there. What's the naturalist in you say? What's the naturalist <laughs> position? You know, the, out here, uh, in God's <laughs> um, it's, uh, you know, I think to be the optimist about it, uh, we have to, you know, not underestimate what COVID might do to people's minds and judgments and knowledge. And maybe people have uh, opened their mind a little bit more. And maybe we'll see um, some movement on it. Um, I don't think it'll get very far. I think any sort of movement or mention of it is positive for us. Um, it, for example, if you remember one of the recovery acts that came out, didn't they have like marijuana, the word marijuana in there more than any other word, mm -hmm. uh, like it, it more than any like medical or healthcare word in there. Right. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of, you know, what we need. We need it just to become a regular deal, like an everyday, just normal thing. 
Now, before I go to Berg and get his opinion about the MORE Act, let me just remind our listeners and our viewers, uh, the reason that a lot of times we have cannabis positions thrown into bills like the MORE Act is because that's the only way we can get them through the Senate. The have Senate has been Republican controlled for so long and they have been so anti-cannabis that you can't have a straight cannabis only bill come out of the House of Representatives and get anywhere. So we've had to attach it to spending bills, to, to rider, as a rider, to budgetary issues. Not because we're trying to be cutesy with the way that we do law, but because that's the only way you can get the Senate to actually consider your bill because it's been so locked down, rock solid knucklehead for so damn long. Berg, the MORE Act, it's one of those federal things, you know, we talked about it the last night on the show. Uh, is this going to be just a symbolic gesture if they pass it since the Senate's going to say no? Or does this really mean something that we're moving forward on it? I mean, personally, I would I would really like for them to pass it, but personally, like it, I, it's stuck in my mind that this isn't going to happen. They're just they're just trying to please us before the election, and then you know once they get into office, they're they're gonna it's back to business as usual, you know. Well, that's been the experience we've had too many times to not have yeah. to consider that as a distinct possibility, unfortunately. You know, some think, people some people would think business as usual is better than business as as manipulated by federal government, though. Uh, I think I, we can all agree that there's... Well, but but that government. is business as usual, though. That is business as usual, though. You know, our governments... Yeah. We have an issue here that we've seen in, in many contexts, the, the people involved, the decision makers... The approaches get better and better over time, mm -hmm. and and while we would like for people to have arrived at a lot of these conclusions mm -hmm. earlier, it takes some people uh, longer. It takes some people to be motivated by things that have nothing to do with connecting to the reality that it's better to have sensible approaches to cannabis. That is it that is. Rick and Jamie behind Deborah? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looked like. Dude, who did you think to, that was? You think I just have? Jamie look at that! Massive. Look at that! Package, man. Who else do you think that? Yeah, how, how can you not recognize that package, Bert? Oh, come on, really? Come on, Bert. I, I should have known. I should have known. Well, if you'd have been here last week, you'd have been anticipating this photo because I promised it not delivered. There it is. So for, so for those of our viewers that weren't here last week, uh, oftentimes Jamie and I have taken some heat over the years from people in the cannabis community for our advocacy. And one of the people that publishes a magazine lampooned us several times as the uh, ambiguously gay duo, the Rick and Jamie. And so that he would draw cartoons of us as like this. And right. Jason and Gary is the... Uh, that's how you see it, huh, Rick? Rick. Yeah. 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 That's what he says it is. Yeah. It's, just, it's a spoof of Jason and Gary. At the, at the time, it was very, very <laughs> irritating, but now it's just, it's hilarious. And I just yeah, love it. Well, I want to state for the record that at the time, it was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> to other people, I'm sure it was. And I, and I, I said, agree. Well, I thought I it know. was the damn thing. Those of us who felt I was not in that headspace. Yep, I, I was not in that headspace, but I understand that, you know, <laughs> as I think they're funny now, I'm sure you found them funny at the time. Hey. Plus, they were hilarious. Hilarious, Ben. I wish hilarious. someone would draw me with a package like that. Well, it is much appreciated now. That's for sure. <laughs> I it was a tribute. That, I uh, dare you guys to get costumes made like that. People have said that to us. Oh, I cannot oh. tell you how many times people said for Halloween, you got to go as those, a. Those bury the, 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 the Kirk. Bury the hatchet thing. People suggested that we show up at, the, at that with those things on, but it has not happened. Yet. <laughs> no, I like girls, and uh, if you do that, girls stop paying attention to you. That's for sure. So, no. Obviously, you need a bigger cod piece. No, no, I don't. Thank you. <laughs> the Perfectly need to get out there equipment. a little bit more. My current equipment is a uh, double A rated, so I'm set. No problem. <laughs> Nice. Okay, that is gross as hell. I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you get to say that considering your background. Look at Hey, maybe we need a little uh, insertion of sophistication into this conversation here. Okay. It just so happens. Better words. We were joined by uh, the professor Gus Rosania from the College of Pharmacy at University of Michigan. How are you doing? Hi, great, Jamie. Hi, everybody. So 
Was it Gus? Yes. Awesome. So, hey, James Salami. <laughs> Some people I haven't seen there for a while. Go on. Yeah. Who is uh, DN Mao? Who's DN Mao? That's uh, Mr. Hashbash. And Rook. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's coming up like that today. <laughs> Somebody just actually leaned on the, uh, on the okay. keyboard. Yeah, somebody yeah, like leaned on the keyboard. <laughs> You've been hacked. That's your, that's your Hebrew name, right? Are you on your oh, that's, what Tim, that's what Tim Bex looks like, too. It's like all these pluses and T's and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm Every, um, phone and I don't understand why it did that. And go to, um, go to, uh, you go to participants and then you can click on yourself. I see it. I see it. I'm doing it right now. Okay. Look yeah, at fix you. that shit, Adam. We're getting tired of looking at it. Where did that come from? That's some crazy <laughs> shit. So, uh, Gus, are you familiar with the Moore Act? Uh, I was familiar with it like three months ago, but you know, since it's been around for so long, I just put it on the back of my mind. So the they were going to vote on it before uh, the U.S. House of Representatives was going to vote on it before the elections. The moderate Democrats thought it would be a good idea to hold off till after the election since no new stimulus package had been agreed upon. And, uh, and so now we're, that's where we are in this end of the lame duck session and uh, Congress should be picking this up to vote on. It's not going to go any further, but it is substantial as far as uh, what it, what it is, would be capable of if it were to pass into law, including taking cannabis off the controlled substances list and getting federal prisoners for marijuana out of jail. So it's, it's poised to, uh, you know, be limited in its, in its process, but it would, if it passes, would represent the furthest that such legislation has ever made it. So we're wondering, do you find that to be important or substantial or just uh, because it's not actually doing anything, just kind of, you know, symbolic? Well, I, I mean, with all the craziness that's going on, I'm not sure, I mean, which way it's going to go because, it's, you know, it's all part of the craziness, right? So who, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, I, I was expecting, you know, the president to actually go to the Joe Rogan show and, you know, smoke a joint and declare uh, hemp, at least, legal in the USA to pretty much end this bureaucracy that we're still stuck with and kind of bring everybody together so everybody will vote for him. And I think he, he, he missed the beat there. I mean, I think that's why he lost, you know? I mean, honestly, I mean, I was expecting him to do that all the way till the end. So I don't know what's gonna happen now because maybe this is the way for people to come together. I mean, this is, this is what I think. This is what I've been thinking for the longest time that, you know, it's really about cannabis, that there's, you know, this is the number one issue, uh, period. Uh, it's, it's cannabis is the future of the economy. It's, it's about being able to properly uh, treat COVID, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, used to <laughs> Talk about treatment. that in a second, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a treatment back in the 1920s after the uh, influenza epidemic. Actually, there was a, I mean, pretty much cannabis was included in 80% of all uh, cough syrups, uh, uh, rhinitis. Uh, they, I mean, every single catar, they have different names for it, but they're all these viral diseases, okay? It used to be in all the cough syrups and all these elixirs back then. I suspect for a reason. <laughs> right. So, you know, we <laughs> talked about one of the last times you were on the show, um, there was. <laughs> was uh you know a, a couple of articles of people hypothesizing on how what's known about cannabis how it could potentially be helpful with uh covid treatment uh since that time and i haven't like looked into it myself uh very much but adam pointed out last night and last few days is aware of a recent study that's been published that concludes that cannabis can help out with the respiratory issues with uh covid and, and the uh, story are, and was it wasn't the study done <clears throat> back in or the the results were posted back in August, and still nobody are talk is talking about it. I mean, what was it the the University of uh, South Carolina did the study? Adam? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was it was in South Carolina. And it was published in uh, August, uh, um, and uh, um, basically it showed that uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Um, 
when uh, um, mice were treated with THC, it led to a 100% survival rate, decreasing lung inflammation and suppressing the chitotine storm, which enabled uh, the mice to overcome uh, their infections. And uh, Adam, could you please name this, the uh, journal that was published in? It's quite... Uh, International Journal of Molecular Sciences. Thank you. And uh, it was uh, published August 28th. Um, and basically, collectively, the study suggests that activation of cannabinoid receptors may serve as a therapeutic modality to treat acute respiratory distress syndrome associated with COVID-19. And uh, that's something that some of us have thought for a long time. I've been begging people, if you know anybody who's a copious cannabis smoker and has gotten COVID, I'm, I'm interested in hearing. Um, I'm also interested in hearing and how they dealt with it. Um, some people are, are having uh, um, long lasting effects. Some people are claiming it's the worst flu they ever had, no long lasting effects. Um, but I'm interested how the cannabis community is uh, um, dealing yeah. with it because I, I do argue that there is some prophylactic um, properties to cannabinoids. There, there's traditional medical knowledge that you know we used to have all the way up to the 1930s when the U.S. made cannabis illegal. It, it used to be part of the pharmacopoeia, and there were a number of different ways to process it from the plant. It was just a very standard ingredient in many different medications. And the U.S. made it illegal in 1930s for reasons that have nothing to do uh, with, uh, with addiction and with uh, schizophrenia and all these other reasons that the government then went on to purport as being the reason. Uh, it was done more for economic reasons, uh, cotton, fiber, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, that had a tremendous impact, I think, on our understanding of medicine. And there is a whole... A system, signaling system that we have within our bodies, which is the endocannabinoid signaling system that essentially remain in the dark up until pretty much the past 10 years when people have been actually aggressively studying it with the legalization of uh, cannabis and, you know, uh, some facilitation on, on studies of the, um, you know, the signaling system, many of which actually come from Israel uh, and, and other countries. Uh, in Netherlands as well. So we have lost medical knowledge. We have lost the ability to develop technology. And the way we're consuming cannabis today, uh, I think it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give enough justice to the possibilities if we were to have actually, you know, thrown our technology to actually making this into a better drug and a better substance for treating so many different diseases that it can treat. Uh, you know, Deb points out and others have talked about how like the, the cannabis becomes a low priority for a lot, of, a lot of these decision makers, but it's tied into so many incredibly important things. Like this perspective of not prioritizing uh, just seems to be completely off. You learn enough about it. And that's what makes it kind of frustrating. Yeah, it's hovering around there. Some good things are going to happen, but it would be so much profoundly more effective for everybody yeah, the, to get it sooner than later. The number one receptors, if you look at receptors in the brain, okay, and these receptors are uh, recognizing signals that are coming in from other cells, whether other cells in the body or other cells in the brain, so other neurons. The number one receptor is actually the uh, CB1, CB2, uh, receptors, and these are the cannabinoid receptors. The, the endogenous ligands are small molecules known as, uh, they are, they're natural to the body. So an endomide and uh, 2-AG are, are the primary receptor ligands, but THC and CBD and the other cannabinoids actually interact with those receptors. So these receptors are present in our brain to 10 times greater concentration than the second most prevalent receptor. This by far the most prevalent receptor we have in our brains 
and we know very, very, very little about it. So that's that's how backwards we are in terms of understanding cannabis and in terms of our ability to properly use it. You know, in combination with other drugs, with other treatments, you know, whether it's surgery or intubation, you know, or, you know, injection. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, from just from getting cancer patients to eat, you know, people that are, you know, starving, that can't eat, you know, just getting them to eat. Uh, just, just that. I mean, that's just one plain example. Well, when you look at, as you mentioned before, the, the full circle that we've come with cannabinoids and cannabis medicines, where it was completely useful every single day in every doctor's bag in the United States of America to absolutely no one even allowed to look at, touch it, or talk about it, to back to the point where CBD medicines are becoming regularly consumed and, and, and prescribed and and we're going to see that just continue to grow. We'll be right back full circle again. It's because it was never logical to ban THC products in the first place, was it, Professor? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's outrageous. I mean, the, the idea of outlawing a plant, okay, and then launching an extermination campaign. You know, this has been by far the largest extermination campaign launch against a living organism, okay? But the most powerful nation of the world, billions of dollars invested into this. For what purposes? I mean, we're fighting planet Earth. We're, fi we're fighting Mother Earth. We're fighting nature, you know? And, we're, and what's even worse is like, we're not just fighting some mosquito that makes us ill. You know, we're actually fighting a sacred medicine from ancestral cultures. I mean, how how more stupid can we get? And then we're forcing our stupidity on other nations by making them sign <laughs> treaties where they are required to, to adopt our principles and our policies about this particular cannabis plant, regardless of those cultural connections that they've got, Doc, Professor. Yeah, I mean, that's, it, it's, uh, I mean, it's bewildering what I mean. What what kind of uh, you know hole we've dug ourselves into over the past eighty years is incredible. I mean, it's really hard to understand. Well, and when, go, ahead, go ahead, Jimmy. No, no, no go ahead. Right. Say, um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, Gus, that uh, you know they, it used to be in the foods, it used to be in the cereals, it used to be in the medicines in the early nineteen hundreds, and then they took it out. You know, when it even was, uh, even the cattle you know, used to yeah, exactly. You know, Yes. All the illnesses and autoimmune diseases that have subsequently followed since then are not controlled by medicines that are man-made from all the pharmaceutical companies. And I think the biggest fear is that, is how we can take care of everything. And uh, it's going to put a lot of companies out of business. So, well, well you know, and, and everything meaning beyond medicine and uh, textiles, fuels, Exactly. Plus, I mean, it, it's it's competition to a lot of big, but, big industry. But look, I mean, think about where we are in Michigan. I mean, I, I'm a pharmaceutical scientist, and I know pharmaceutical sciences because that's that's my field. Okay, uh, it used to be we used to have six companies here, six pharmaceutical companies: uh, Warner Lambert, there's actually two companies, uh, Park Davis, and both were in Ann Arbor, okay? Park Davis originated in Detroit, but then they moved to Ann Arbor. That's where they had their headquarters. There was Pharmacia over in uh, Kalamazoo. I think they were there. Upjohn, okay? There was Searly, actually. Searly, that's also in Chicago. You know, we had Searly. And that was all the way up to 2007, okay? Pfizer came, bought all those companies, and guess what Pfizer did? shut them all down, laid off all the workers, okay? Decimated, decimated the pharmaceutical industry in Michigan. I mean, we used to be a powerhouse. Carr Davids, Warner Lambert. I mean, these are huge, huge companies, okay? So when they say, oh, pharmaceutical companies are gonna be unhappy about this. Well, guess what? Guess what Pfizer has done with its clinical, regulatory, and safety R&D headquarters? Guess where they are? Anybody? Ann Arbor, right? 
No, no, they shut it down here. They shut, that they shut down. it down. They're, They're, like in Zoo. They're in Keizu. No, they, they, no. Huh. They're in Wuhan, China. Huh. Wuhan, China. Ain't that, Wuhan. Ain't that where... Uh... <laughs> well, the, the, one of the interesting things about yeah. Michigan, one of the interesting <laughs> things about Michigan and the pharmaceutical industry is it was so powerful that that they literally wrote a law into Michigan law that you cannot, as a Michigan resident, sue a right. pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, for no longer here. liability, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, that's right. So, one of the worst laws in the nation, Michigan's famous for it, our, our terrible insurance laws, our others. But, That's well, right, yeah. Well, Jim, but Jim is pandering to the pharmaceutical companies. Jim is showing, showing us a picture of an ancient, uh, of a really old hemp yeah, That's yeah. a Park Davis. That's a Park Davis model. <laughs> it's a Park so Davis. Uh, the, repeal today, the repeal today legalization campaign kicked off at the old Park Davis in Detroit. Yep. And That's that, right. And they did research on cannabis and the... I mean, I, I was going to launch an archaeology project at the university looking at the old books, and I was going to go to the tax records, okay, because this should be in the tax records. Uh, how many acres were planted with hemp in Michigan? You know, because it was, uh, you know, cannabis, at, you know, that was being grown in Michigan. It was uh, hemp grown in Michigan that was being processed by Park Davis. I mean, this this used to be a huge part of the of the state economy, and uh, I, I don't know how how big it was, but Park Davis was a major producer of cannabis oil extract, and they would ship it all over the United States in these very big bottles. And then from these big bottles, the pharmacists would then uh, aliquot it out into smaller bottles that then would be sold to the consumers, to the uh, you know to the uh, you know because yeah retail sales, but but Park Davis would be the wholesaler. And they used to process this in, in Detroit. And there there should be tax records. So we should know, we should be able to know if, if we want to dig into it. I was trying to do it before COVID. Now COVID situation made everything difficult in that in that regards that you know then looking up for, for these records uh, is, is is hard now. But uh, but these records are there. These records are there. I think it's a really important question we need to Answer: How big was this back back in the days? Back say 19, 1929, 1930, 31, which is you know when it became illegal. But um, yeah, this used to be very big, very big here in Michigan, and and we've lost it. I mean, we've lost it. We're we're rescuing. It's coming back, slowly coming back. But this used to be part of regular pharmaceutical business. You know, regular from, industry. A, from an industrial perspective, too, Ford is famous for having, you know, built a car from hemp. That's right. From hemp. And if you go to the Henry Ford Museum Greenfield Village, you'll see like these oil extraction machines and stuff like that, but it says like soybean on it or something like that. Right. They even race and the entire the, history of that. But that coming back would be a, go ahead. Yes. Adam. The car was both soybean and hemp. The, the hard right. plastic was soybean and the outer shell was hemp. So the, it, it was not a hemp car. It was a hemp soybean car. That the yeah. that report actually promoted. Yeah, the the so the the plastic. So you actually get plastic out of cellulose, so it's, it's celluloid, right? So right. celluloid in the old days, celluloid was used to make the uh, you know the films for cameras. So it's like a pla you know that's celluloid. It's a plastic, and and then you can make it big and thick, and and you know you can reinforce it with stuff, and it's 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 a, I mean it's a plastic you know it's, it's a real polymer that you can use to make car parts out of and, and there's actually a movie out there of uh, Henry Ford going at, at his own car with a bat and bam, bam, bam. and uh, you know it, 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 it won't break it just bends and comes back and you know it's, it's lightweight material it's uh, you know carbon neutral so you know it doesn't produce in it you're not uh, you know it's not derived from petroleum from fossil fuels it's natural and uh, that's technology from 1940. <laughs> right. 1940. What we intentionally forgot. We intentionally forgot that. 1940. Yep. You know, then, then what's his name? Dustin Hoffman rediscovered plastics in 1960s. You know, with uh, what is it? The graduate. You know, right? That's the famous line. Oh, you know, plastics. Well, guess what? 
They had right. it back then, 1930s, 1940s. They already had this thing going. Well, I mean, Gus, most of these, most people aren't old enough to know that plastic is like a Kleenex word or, or a refrigerator word. It, it, it doesn't describe what it actually was because at first there was something called Bakelite that was um, a, a, a branded product. And people, it had hit the market and nobody knew what this stuff was. They had never seen stuff like this before. You know, we, we see so much plastic in our life now that we don't understand that at one point, and when I say at one point, we're talking 50, 60 years ago, there was no plastic in everybody's life. Plastic was a, a, an expensive commodity when it first came out. Yeah, so, well, I mean, had we, had we had cannabis, I think back in 1930s, we would have probably had plastics much earlier than you know than we had because they were around. I mean, like celluloid was around. I mean, that's right. that's where all these uh, old Hollywood uh, movies, uh, you know, the uh, silent movies, you know, that's that's where. I mean, that that they're they're plastic film, you know. So plastic was around back then, but it was derived from celluloid. That's why it's called celluloid. Okay, but it was plastic, and it was technology that we had back then. And had we let it go, you know, we would have probably developed it much in the same way as we developed today's modern plastic, except they wouldn't be derived from petroleum. They would have been derived from the plant, from hemp. And, 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 and you've got to think about this, okay, because petroleum itself, actually fossil fuel, it used to be plants. It used to be plants. These are fossilized plants that go under the earth and with pressure, and temperature in, in the bottom of the earth, they will become oil. That's how oil is generated. So we can do the same thing with cannabis using temperature and pressure, but we just have to do it with machines. You know, so. Okay, so um, switching gears a little bit, you mentioned a, uh, uh, a space race approach through, through all of this. Uh, describe that and jump into that conversation. Why should we be challenged? challenging yeah tesla. well yes okay it's not just tesla okay so I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background okay this is tesla this is amazon because uh elon musk is not the only one who wants to go to mars uh you know the amazon guy uh what's his name jeff bezos also He's wants to go to mars okay uh and soon enough the apple dudes and the googles are also going to want to go to Mars. And there's a reason for that, okay? Because in the process of trying to go to Mars, you have to develop very lightweight and powerful energy sources. You know, that's that's how you get to Mars. You know, you can't carry so much fuel with you. I mean, you've got a long ways to go. Highly okay. reactive solar panels, things of that nature, uh, harnessing nuclear technology, things well, of that nature. That's that's not there. That's not there yet. Okay, that's not there yet. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think eventually, you know, it will get there. But that's not what Elon Musk is doing. I mean, so he's he's well, he's probably going to go in that direction. Okay, but I have a a different idea. Okay, because. His idea is that he, he wants to ultimately go to Mars. Actually, he says he wants to go to Mars to die, just not die on impact, okay? My idea is I want to go to Mars to live, okay? I want to have a family in, in Mars, or I want my daughters to have a family in Mars, or maybe my granddaughters. I want to populate Mars, okay? I want to go to Mars to live. And for me to go there to live, okay, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take cannabis there, right? Because cannabis produces fuel, okay? It produces nutrients. It's got every single amino acid plus the minerals plus all the phytonutrients and vitamins I need, okay? It's, it's the most efficient at converting sunlight and air into these products, okay? It, it also generates fiber. It generates cellulose that can be used for making plastics. And if you can make plastics out of cellulose, that's what we're talking about. You can use 3D printers to print everything you possibly need, okay? So you don't have to transport food to Mars. You don't have to transport you know, fuel to Mars. You don't have to transport 
you know, supplies to Mars, paper, toilet paper. Where are they going to get their toilet paper from? I mean, if you don't take cold toilet paper, a woman won't join you. <laughs> you know? so, so, you know, so what do you have to do? Well, what you have to do is you have to take seeds, okay? You got to take cannabis seeds. Now, Musk is already tunneling or thinking about tunneling on Mars. So, you know, the deal with Mars is that you did this tunnel. So he's got this boring machine. You know, he's got a company that makes tunnels. Okay. And those tunnels, okay, you can seal off and then you can provide energy. Okay. And you can provide create a, create a microclimate inside so that it's livable. You could actually uh, actually create grow, oxygen. Grow yeah. hemp. Grow yes. hemp. You know, you, 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 you grow hemp. Okay. And then at that point, you know, you, you, you know, from hemp, you know, while here on planet Earth, while, while he's growing hemp there, okay, in Mars, you, we on planet Earth are figuring out how to convert hemp, okay, into everything we need to live, into the food, the plastics, the tools, you know, 3D printer, the oils, into absolutely everything, okay, so that then we can also send that technology to Mars, and we'll be all set at that point. We just need to make the trip there and we will have a living room. We will have plenty of pot for everybody. We'll all be happy. So as opposed to being quarreling with each other <laughs> on Mars, because you know, if you go on a death trip, it's gonna end up bad if if, if if it actually gets there, you know, it's a suicide mission. No, I mean I think you gotta think about taking your girlfriend or your wife, you know, and uh <laughs> well, making it a merry occasion. And of course, the concept of, of, of living underground on Mars is the only real way to make it work because cosmic radiation, there's meteorites, there's so many problems that happen on a surface level that don't happen when you're below the surface. Uh, yeah, and that's the only way to really make it livable. And having, you know, Musk's boring machine drop down from the, from the uh, Martian sky, creating on an angle some kind of a deep hole and, and then no, they, popping it. I mean, the, the, the construction of the tunnels is going on. You know, the, like the, the tunnels are being made in L.A. And I think, I don't know, I think Las Vegas, they're making tunnels. So he's got a company that does this. Under the Hudson Tyler. River in New York, they're making one. Plus, yeah. they're going to they're gonna do that stupid canal. What is it? 20, 100 feet below the surface of the of the Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. Oh, is that what they're that, that stupid okay. chant, that uh, uh, Line 5 reroute, 100 feet underneath the surface of the water. How they're even going to do that, I don't know. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that's, that's you know, so essentially I'm, I'm proposing a, an alternative to what uh, Musk is, is proposing. And, and he just wants to, you know, send, I guess, man to the moon, to the moon, to Mars to die because a woman, are, I mean, who's going to, who's going to join that effort? You know, it's like a one-way trip to die in Mars. I mean, what man is going to actually join that? I mean, you're talking about a very small proportion of, you know, crazy gay men who may want to do that. You know, you'd have to be insane. You'd kill, <laughs> they, they'd kill each other. Why gay men? <laughs> on the way. You know, it's like, why would anybody do this, right? So, uh, and, and, you know, I, I give women credit because women are not that crazy. Okay, I no matter how There'd be no women on board, so that's why all the men would have to be gay because there'd be no <laughs> I don't know. There, there's <laughs> no, there's no, woman, no, no woman would go. I mean, who, who's going to go? Know someone. Actually, you, you might know her. Wait, what's her name? Um, my college podcast. But... <laughs> you know, to be an yeah. I mean, 3D printers are pretty amazing devices. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so, you know, I'll bring the mushrooms. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, that, I mean, that's the thing. I think once once you start growing uh, weed, then all other things become possible, you know. But I think the, the weed is the first thing. And um, getting that going, I mean, you can even take them insects there and even animals that feed on the weed. Well, Gus, so, uh, if you, let's follow up on what Jim said as far as taking mushrooms there. If what we're talking about is being able to take cannabis and then synthesizing from the cannabis plant all the different ingredients that you need in order to support the physical aspects of life, you would also need to take something with you that you could grow that would then be synthesized down to create the pharmaceutical aspects that you need of life. And certain mushrooms have all of those chemical components expressed, and you could therefore justify having a mushroom farm in order to create the medicines you'd need to treat various illnesses. Yeah, I mean, so, 
I, I think, well, we have to think about getting a, an ecosystem going uh, in, in Mars. And certainly uh, the abilities to produce medicine, okay, medicine out of plants without requiring, you know, like this very complex synthesis, which are only possible in a very inefficient economy as we have here on planet Earth. Uh, you know, it's, it's essential. So no, so it's, it's not just about mushroom, it's about every single plant derived medicine because this is actually, this would be our, our medicine cabinet. Yeah. You know, it would be in plants because plants synthesize the medicines and that then we wouldn't have to, uh, you know, I mean, certainly we wouldn't be able to go to a Walgreens there, you know, and, uh, and well, and, and I don't think Pfizer would be there because we don't want Pfizer there. You know, they would dis they would actually destroy it. <laughs> yeah, they'd be looking for resources they could exploit and then ship back to Earth in order to do you know. <laughs> That's issues. right. They will destroy the you know ju just to make their their uh, Wall Street building have uh, shinier uh, bathroom mirrors. <laughs> well, in, in an environment like Mars, where you're it, it's basically an inorganic experience. You uh, the only organic molecules are essentially the ones you're bringing with you from Earth. Those organic molecules have to be able to to go from the small package that you're able to transmit across the stars with into this much larger thing that's going to create a greenhouse and sustain life for the, the people that live there. So you'd have to travel as spores, you'd have to travel as seeds, but the, the success of that particular operation would really make the difference between survival or, or failure. Yeah, absolutely. This is the first thing that we need to do is figure out how to grow hemp in Mars, which essentially is growing hemp underground, making it the most efficient way. I mean, ideally, it would be automated and uh, with robots and then converting ways to convert, automated ways to convert hemp from, uh, you know, a, a plant into whatever end product you, you, you imagine, whether it's medicine, food, uh, hopefully good tasting food. You know, it's not just crappy food, you know, actually come up with good food, uh, you know, and then uh, the flavors are inherent in the different the various that's, types of strains. So. That that's doing. correct. So the terpenes are, that's that's absolutely correct. So you have the, the opportunity to make all kinds of different strains and even, you know, even well, so if you're going to make cellulose or celluloid or plastic, maybe you want a woody kind of cannabis plant with a thick stem and a lot of, uh, you know, maybe a lot of a little, fibers, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of fiber, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, versus if you want some, you know, it's like you can start selecting different plants for different purposes. And at the end of the day, you want something that is very effective at trapping sunlight or, or artificial light. If it's underground, you get to illuminate it with artificial light and then converting it into biomass as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible in the smallest uh, square footage as possible. So that's kind of the vision I have and we're we're in a really good position at the at the University of Michigan in the United States overall because we have the most advanced technology right now in the world. And uh, uh, Christmas, this, Christmas on Mars. Well, the the, the technology. Yeah, well, ultimately we want to take it to Mars, but the technology is here on Earth, and it's technology that's used now to process corn and to process soybean and to process wood. You know, this is, it's currently, it, it, it exists, okay? But it's used to process all these other plant material, okay? And it just has to be tweaked. It, all, all it needs is to be tweaked. I mean, we get ethanol from, from corn, okay? And we can use the same methods. We get ethanol from corn to obtain methanol, ethanol or methanol from cannabis. You know, you just got to tweak them, you know? All, all, I mean, same thing for for soy protein, same thing for oil. I mean, these are these are methods that are applicable to uh, other, you know, seeds and other plants as they're applicable to cannabis, right? It's the same the same technology. It just has to be adapted. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of that's done. I mean, some of that is yeah. commonly done. You can get hemp protein at a yes, store right it, now. Yeah, it is done, but it, it is so rudimentary. I mean. I mean, it sounds like it's advanced, but it's actually rudimentary in relation of where it could be if hemp was actually the, the thing that was being used sure. to 
make life possible on planet Earth. Yeah, we should well, be focusing know. on it because it makes the most sense. Yeah, I, I you mean, know, I'm, I mentioned last night on the broadcast that the uh, one of the biggest expenses that the wood pulp industry has is acquiring new trees and the lumbering of the same. If you're utilizing the same space over and over and over, multiple harvests each year, where you're not trying to rush to acquire new lands in order to gain more fiber, because that's what it is. Harvesting trees is all about uh, acquiring fiber. And if you're able to acquire fiber from, from traditional agricultural lands and leave the timber untouched, then our planet is bettered for it. We certainly have suffered for the lack of trees nowadays. The the cutting of the Amazon, the cutting of the great North American forests, deforestation of Europe, uh, indigenous cultures uh, utilizing their trees to the point where there's none and now the soil cannot provide for them. Um, we we are at a lack right now in our in our planet's history and we need to That's correct correct. That. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, it's a substitute for petroleum uh, you know, petroleum derived plastics and petroleum derived everything. Uh, at cannabis is an is a an excellent starting point for developing the chemistry to do that. And the only reason we haven't developed it in large scale is because we have petroleum. You know, because it's and, and, and a lot of petroleum is subsidized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so so the government actually puts money into it on the one hand to the petroleum industry. Well, on the other hand, it makes hemp very impossible to negotiate with. So you say, oh yeah, there's technology, but but you know, but you can't finance it. You cannot finance it in a through a bank. You know, because I mean only right now, three weeks ago, did we get USDA approval from the federal government for our, our hemp uh, crops through MDARD, you know, and uh and, and only now will we begin to be able to get crop insurance and uh, you know to get loans from, from financial institutions even if, if they let us if the bureaucracy lets us you know and that's that's why I would have liked the president to get to smoke a joint over in, in Joe Rogan and say hey world you know hemp is legal right you know well, we don't we don't want Joe Biden to go smoke a joint on Joe Rogan because he would probably <laughs> cough himself into a heart attack and we don't and, want that. and now he's in Texas and it's not <laughs> quite as safe as it, as it was when he used to broadcast from LA <laughs> Hey, you just hurt his foot. Give him some CBD at least. <laughs> hey, hey, so, uh, so what is Gus? What are you doing, or what are the plans for research now that you know? Can well, so yeah. So the first thing is, how do I get the administration to admit that USDA has certified MDARD's hemp cultivation effort within the state? So that makes our ability to grow hemp. 100% legal to the extent that we report our operations to MDART and to the extent that we let MDART take, take care of the ultimate testing and tracking to make sure that we're actually growing hemp and not marijuana. So I have to convince everybody at the university that, that we're there, that you know this is where we are right now uh, at a time when everybody, the only thing they can think about is COVID on the one hand, and you know the fact that they're going to be probably losing a lot of money because of all the situation on the other hand, and the fact that actually what made that used what used to make higher education attractive to students, which used to be the campus life, you know, your uh, football games, your parties. The, the fact that, you know, boys and girls could mix freely and find love and maybe uh, procreate or maybe not get there, but at least try <laughs> in their own way. <laughs> uh, you know, all that is going to be gone. So Any what's the attractiveness? Do that with each other, though, too. <laughs> who, who wants to go to class, okay? <laughs> R&J, for example, over there. <laughs> if, if anybody <laughs> wanted to go to class, I wouldn't be here, okay? I'd, I'd be, you know, on the beach and, you know... <laughs> I wouldn't be trying to, you know, to get people interested in, in what I do, right? You know, I'd be in, in, a, in, a, in a beach with a, with a supermodel. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, actually, I, I want to mention, so, so this is also really interesting because, you know, with the current situation, like, there's no reason why students should, should go to college, okay? Because uh, the fun part of it is done, you know, all they get is the pain now from, 
from uh, from their props, right? Much <laughs> of the education, yeah. None of the actual real. Really, that's the painful, you know. That's the painful yeah. part because they get an education, for, you know, from the on campus side. Mm -hmm. And so we've got that, okay. And now, you know, with the with the current situation, the COVID situation, immigration, it has been, you know, curtailed. So there's no people from the outside coming into the U.S. Okay. Now you got Elon Musk. Uh, you know, Jeff Bezos, I mean, essentially, if you add up how much money they've made over the past six months, it's like a trillion dollars, okay? A trillion dollars amongst those companies that, you know, these are the investors. So these are like you and I, you know, whether you have a 401k or you're, you know, you're betting on the stock market one way or another, you know, or it's your money that is in the bank that's now being invested, you know, somewhere in there. Uh, you know, this this money is essentially floating around and there's no people, I mean, where are they going to get the people to, to do what they say they're, they're going to do with this money, you know, because they're not going to go to college. They're not, because college is no longer, you know, fun, okay? So Elon Musk actually has been very good about this. So he's been in Instagram and, and, and he's always, I mean, he's recruited from Instagram, okay? So uh, he's got a huge following, Instagrammers, and that's how he's doing it. So he's going to recruit directly out of high school, all right? And if you look, if you look at his interviews, he's saying, "Oh, why go get a college education? You know, it's useless. I mean, so not only are we not going to be providing the fund we used to, you know, from the university standpoint, but Elon Musk, who is like this god amongst young people with all this vision, is saying, you know, you you'd be wrong to go to a university. And what he, he and what he's saying is, come work with me. You know, so if you're a smart high school kid, you come work with me." And then what we're going to do is we're going to give you certificates, you know, so you, you need to learn how to program a computer. Okay, you take a two-week two -week course, a three-month course, and you get a certificate, and you get trained to do whatever job it is that you need to do, okay? So Elon Musk is also trying to put us out of business, okay? And, and this is what we're being, I mean, this is what, what we're being faced with, you know, from a university, from a university standpoint. So... Me taking on Elon Musk is about our survival as, as an educational institution of higher learning, okay? And, you know, if I don't take him on directly, you know, and if, if cannabis, if cannabis doesn't take him on directly the way I'm proposing, we're going to lose all this intellectual Material, resource, the smart people, you know, we're going to lose them to Musk, wherever he's at, you know, whether it's California, Texas, or, you know, maybe they get shipped out to China. I don't know where, where he's going. He's certainly not investing in Michigan, okay? He's not investing. He decided to build a gigafactory in, in Austin, Texas, not in Michigan. When, when we've got, I mean, what technology do they have there to build cars? Nothing. You know, we've got the technology here. We've got the people, okay? But he's not investing here, okay? So we need to do something. We need to do something about that. So, I mean, to me, you know, it, it sounds crazy. It, so, it sounds like totally nuts, right? But for me, it's like, this is my life. I mean, this is real life for me. It's just like, it's totally surreal, you know? And I, I'm taking, I mean, I, I am taking on Elon Musk. I mean, he was saying a lot of BS before about college people. And then putting out this, this BS uh, mission statements about going to die on Mars. It's like, what's this crap? You know, it's like, nobody's going to go to die on Mars. I mean, that, that, that's, that's, it's like you'd have to be nuts to say that, you know? So, no, so we're, we're this is why, you know, I'm very much, very much interested in, in cannabis as, as, as the technology, building cannabis as the technology for us to go to Mars, beat Elon Musk. Okay, in his game, beat Elon Musk and do it here in Michigan. Let's do it here in Michigan. We can do it. You know, we can do it. We need to do it. Now, you know, now you can say I'm totally nuts. I, I want you guys to say, hey, Gus, you know, it's like you've lost your well, mind. Hey, no, no. So, so I'm afraid that. somebody has to want to put up a bunch of money to get that going, like just about everything else. 
Well, I was well say, you got to like mm-hmm. reconfigure Ford or GM or something, and yeah. also the University of Michigan. You got to like, I don't know, integrate all of them. And you maybe walk even into the other universities and, too. And grab them by the scruff of the neck. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, tell them what's going on. Well, there's been a brain drain for a long time, and we've seen sometimes uh, the smartest people snatched up by industry before they they uh, get even to the end of their collegiate career. So, that's- and obviously, the, that certificate you know program or formula that that Elon has is going to be attractive to a lot of people, and then that's the more people who Elon has in his very specific system too. We could keep working. Yeah, with I mean, you know, it's survival. You know, it's survival. It, I mean, he's he's trying to survive. I mean, obviously, he's trying to more than survive. I mean, he's, he's trying to bet to make money, but I'm sure he's he's he was able to make four hundred billion dollars in two years. Yeah. <laughs> that pays for a lot of lawn cuts, you know, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of mowing. Not worried about getting milk on the table. Sure. You know, so talk about winning a lottery, you know. Like the unlimited lottery, it just like keeps coming. It's bigger than any, any lottery, right? Yeah, I mean, but remember, remember when Elon Musk smoked that joint with Joe Rogan? He got a lot of crap for that. He got he got crazy. a lot of pushback for that. And I think, you know, push, keep keep doing it, Elon. You just keep keep burning down. Hang out with Snoop Dogg for a weekend, see what they say. You it know, seemed to hurt him too much. He became the the second richest man in the world since then. That's you know, right. You know, there's no, there's no. But no such thing as bad right. press, right? I mean, as long as they're talking about you, it's a good thing. That's right. That's right. And, I mean, no, I mean. Can we talk uh, about I one think... thing, Gus? I mean, SpaceX's opportunity to be able to to uh, launch and retrieve uh, vehicles into space gives us an opportunity to, to accelerate delivery of, of raw materials for assembly out in, in outer space. We're talking about being able to build space pods or even vehicles out there now with that with the SpaceX jumbo trans, I mean that's that's a reality now, right? It certainly is something we could consider a second oh, yes. space station, perhaps a, an assembly space station, right? Yes, yes. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, I mean Elon Musk has definitely broken barriers, just being able to show that uh, rocketeering can work really well in, in in industry, in the business context, you know. In, that it, it may it, it actually can make money Wall Street, mm-hmm. you know, proving the banks wrong, I guess, because you know who could have guessed. Uh, so he, I mean, he has made already some major achievements. Uh, you know, maybe he's said some things he shouldn't be saying, and maybe he made some very equally serious mistakes in terms of humanity's uh, future. I think this whole Starlink system. So these satellites that are flowing around the earth as a replacement for mobile phones and uh, internet, I think, you know, they, they essentially mean that we won't be able to ever become another advancement civilization in the future because they will destroy astronomy. So these are like clouds of satellites flying in the sky everywhere on the planet, you know, day and night. Uh, that, that idea, I think, is you know, well, for the future of humankind, it's going to be uh, terrible, but but it does give us a major opportunity during our lifetime to set things straight and set ourselves straight, you know, and, uh, and I mean, I think we're there where, you know, we have to stop looking for happiness in money, you know, and we got to find happiness from within. And we got to do it not with pharmaceuticals. I mean, we have to use every tool available. But once we start doing it with pharmaceuticals, we, we've actually, you know, gone down the wrong path, right? Because the right path is this plants and fungi that, you know, essentially date from the origins of, you know, of life on Earth that co-evolved with us. And that used to be part of ancient knowledge, ancient medical knowledge. And in fact, you know, there's, there are legends that people used to live hundreds of years old in the past, okay? And uh, who knows? I mean, maybe it is true, but maybe it's not a hundred, but maybe they, they may have well be living far longer than we're living today, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, 
why shouldn't we give sacred medicines a chance? You know, why should we, you know, why should we schedule them as schedule one substances? It just seems the most unfair thing that we could possibly do to Mother Earth as, and to ourselves as a society. <laughs> it's like, how did we get so wrong? How did we get so wrong? Monetary system. <laughs> well, let's face it, it's beyond the monetary system. It's about control and power. Remember that some of those ancient wisdoms that you had were associated with paganism and when Christianity or when other organized religions, including, I mean, let's face it, uh, almost every religion, when they took over a native area, destroyed the native religion and took over and enforced their own will upon whether it was Islam or, or Christianity or Hinduism, doesn't matter. So uh, it, it's all about that. That's absolutely. And this is a way to take over the lands of the Native Americans. When it came to the point of expanding into into their lands and, and taking ownership over there. And it's part of the European colonization of America. And it's just the, you know, the whole conquest and colonization of Europe over the rest of the world, which is to say, you know, your ancestral traditional cultural knowledge is inferior and useless. And what you gotta do is you gotta be subservient to our models which are essentially the pharmaceutical synthetic chemistry models, yep. at least in today's version. You know, yes, you you hit it right on the mark. This is this is all about subjugating people and dehumanizing them. You know, uh, making them inferior human beings so that then they can be suppressed, enslaved, and exterminated. Yep. So. When when we talk about things like it was created by greed or it was created by this other thing, what you just said, Gus, to create subservient cultures is exactly what, what that was done. And recognize that they didn't remove just those entheogenic substances uh, and cannabis and things from the from the natives. They removed all aspects of culture, including yeah. their, their pantheon of gods, including their traditional manner of dress, including even their language. And, and in some cases, removing children from native communities so that they could be raised as a as the overpowering culture therefore diminishing the population of the natives to the point where they're no longer politically uh, uh, it, it, you know put, uh, uh, powerful nor were they numerically right. superior right yeah it, it continues to this day because you know god forbid the native americans may suddenly become a powerful voting <laughs> right. you know uh, you know they, they well, just start electing presidents you well know, right now in, we have in a Arizona, right? Wasn't that a, yes, a, exactly. Yes. But we have a perfect example nowadays in Michigan uh, with the Native American culture and the Bay Mills Group uh, starting their own cannabis industry out on tribal lands in the Upper Peninsula and the Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, they've they've taken uh, uh, the promises that were made to them centuries ago by the United States government, those of sovereignty and being able. I said it wrong again, didn't I? <laughs> sovereignty. 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 Thank you. I'm, I, it's going to take me a long Come time. Come on, you're the. Oh, you haven't said it in a week, yeah. you know. What's well, a couple extra syllables? No, don't worry about yeah, it. Uh, okay. I, I knew I said it wrong as soon as I said it. That's why I paused. Yeah. But the point being, now now we've got a, an opportunity for them to to let that particular promise work in their behalf, as opposed to being a negative as it has in the past. Similar to the way casino gaming is spread across uh, Native American lands across Michigan. The, the cannabis industry is likely to do the same, and that's just going to give them more power and influence back to where maybe they should so, have. So just for a little more perspective on that, though, they, they tried to work with the state for over a year before before yeah. just choosing to do it Whitney in, their own, in their own way. Whitney Gravel from the Bay Mills Group was a guest on this very show. Uh, you can take a look at our archives on YouTube to, to uh, check that out or on Facebook. Um, and she did talk about that, that they tried very much. The state of Michigan, there are about 12 or 14 different native groups in the state. The state would have liked to have entered into a single agreement that incorporated all of them and bound them by the same rules. But you can't get 12 to 14 groups of any different people together and have them agree on something. So you need to enter individual groups with these. And the state just wasn't having it. They wanted one or they were going to get none. So none is what they got, and now the Bay Mills Group is starting off on their own. So, yeah, the the other interesting point about the Native American communities is that actually they're even more divided than we are about 
you know, incorporating cannabis and hemp and all these, uh, you know, sacred plants and fungi of theirs into, into their modern way, way of life. And the reason is because, you know, addiction is a big problem amongst these communities. And, uh, you know, and then they're fed, you know, this gateway theory of addiction that um, cannabis will lead to the other hard drugs. And, uh, you know, so, so they, you know, they have just been mis, misinformed, brainwashed, just like, just like all of us are. But because addiction has been quite a big problem in the, uh, you know, in the reservations and alcoholism, then they're even more fearful. It seems than contradictory to them. It's it's not really yeah. that, it seems that way to them, so it's harder to to move. You know, forward. and uh, you know, it's it's. I mean, it's it's a it's a funny paradox that it's it's that way. But I think I think actually I think gradually they they you know they will realize. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it's. I mean, it's sad because you know this is something that we did to them. And uh, I mean, we're doing it to ourselves, obviously, but you know, we, we even do it worse to the Native Americans for the sake of you know taking over their everything, you know, their land, their culture, their everything, and um, you know, and it's something that I think deserves attention. You know, the the I mean, the Native Americans have suffered greatly, and uh, I think that actually they they need our help, and that. Um, I mean, they should be the ones to, you know, be benefiting from all the, you know, from all the revival and the legalization of cannabis uh, first. So, you know, so we, we just have to keep that in mind. Uh, we, I mean, the, the Michigan House of Representatives meet, used to meet in a building called the uh, Cora Anderson Building. And if you take a look at Cora Anderson's history, she was a, a Native American hero. Uh, back from in the day, negotiated settlements, the the uh, you know the Trail of Tears, all those different things that she had to put up with, uh, and and then they renamed it just recently to something else, to some benign European name, right? So it lost its character because we've once again turned our back on one of those historical figures that helped us get to where we are now. So I was saddened when they they changed the name from the Anderson Building to whatever they call it now, the Milliken Building or something like that. Probably. Yeah, I mean, so, but, but, yeah, it. Uh, we have so many examples of how we we owe what we're at today due to the minority cultures that we uh, once again, you know, kind of cast aside or put under our boot. Even yeah, Rutgers, I mean, there's, go ahead. yeah, there, there there are those cultures here in the states. It's also good to think about the Amazon. You know, the Amazon is about to go. You know, to be burned down. Okay, uh, at 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 great loss to everybody. Okay, we don't want that to happen. So, you know, our, our resources, let's remember, you know, it's, it's, it's one world, you know, it's not just about us here. Uh, you know, we also have to think about the, the Amazon and there's still traditional indigenous populations there in the Amazon, okay? And, you know, we also have to look at, you know, think about it, about things more broadly even, more broadly, you know, I mean, the Amazon is rather obvious. It's rather obvious, especially after this, you know, what happened, I mean, how it was being burned just a, a few months ago. Uh, I think that, that may hopefully that turned toned down. I don't know if it's it toned down, it's just people are so distracted with the elections of COVID and it's all gone. I was, I was gonna ask you that actually. No, I don't know. That you know, maybe that. it's not there anymore, you know, so it's a new point. Yeah, because we've been so focused on, on the elections and on COVID that, you know, what's going on with the Amazon, we have no idea. But uh, hopefully it's still there, you know, but it's definitely going, it's definitely going out. It's going to be wiped out. So, I, I mean, and that's, I mean, those are real traditional cultures of people who, you know, that some of them have never seen a, you know, a, 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 uh, a person outside of their community in the, in the middle of the jungle. So they know the, the, the plants, they know, you know, the fungi, they, you know, they have all this knowledge, ancestral knowledge. And, you know, we're going to lose it. You know, we're going to lose it. 
There have been no many problem. stories written in, in motion pictures made about uh, a discovery from the rainforest of a special medication that does something. Yeah, the of reason those, are so, reason those are so successful is because it's yes. totally believable because it happens. It does. No, this is what we use, you know, for anesthesia, you know, muscle relaxants, you know, the, the same the same thing that they used to, you know, poison our, you know, for, you know, they, they used to poison, uh, you know, poison, for, poison dart darts. Frogs. Yes. Yeah, poison frogs, you know, the frogs. But, you know, there's also like the fish that, you know, that, uh, you know, they used to paralyze the fish, you know, in, in a river. They'll, 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 they're, they're, they'll throw this herb or something, plant something into a river and the fish paralyze, you know, then they can just scoop the, the fish out. And all these are small molecules that have very specific activities on receptors in the brain and they're used for things like anesthesia like sedation you know like if you want to do surgery or let's say you want to go to mars like you know like i want to go to mars okay now i, I want to go to mars actually you know one of my things is to freeze myself you know go frozen in a liquid nitrogen tank and then once again there i get thought out alive okay like the props here in michigan except we do it with a person okay but to do that right we got to tap into this natural knowledge Right, whether it's anesthesia or whether you know, or whether it's freezing ourselves, you know, how are we going to freeze ourselves? Okay, well, we got to learn from the frog that freezes in the winter and then thaws out in the spring. Okay, so how many people know that? I mean, right, you're in Michigan, you know that, right? Frogs freeze in winter. They, they go into torpor. Yeah, they go into torpor. A little bit of a, of a, of a you know. Yeah, then they no, they become so, they actually different. become solid. Okay. They become, they, you know, they become, they, they don't become, they don't crystallize, they don't become ice, but they become into this very viscous, I don't know how to say that word. Suspended uh, animation. Yes, suspended animation. Okay, now, you know, add a little bit of, you know, some good mental something or other in there just to keep you happy, you know, and then you can ship yourself to Mars without having to feed yourself. Okay, that's what I, that's how I want to get there first. <laughs> a long trip to Mars full of pleasurable thoughts. He's going on, on, a, on a gay spaceship, frozen, like a, a popsicle, that. but still kind of bendable. It, it sounds, I popped yeah. my bubble. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> remember, you it's know? a gay mission because no women I are mean, going, remember? Because they're too yeah, smart to go on a death mission, but this is a life mission. This is a life I mission. Know, right? I know. Well, you yeah. got to convince them of that, and Gus won't bear yeah. it too because he's he'll be frozen. That's up to you, right? No, I mean, I'm look. I, I'm going to freeze myself before I die. I'm going to freeze okay. myself. Okay, I'm going to freeze myself, and I'm going to tell people, thaw me out once you're able to take me there. Okay, thaw me, but then give me the technology to live like longer. You know, like a hundred more years. And 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 I'll just keep going like that, you know. I'll just keep plan. telling me yeah. people. <laughs> just just give, me, yeah, give yeah. me the Walt Disney package. That's what you just like, you roll up to the place. And say, <laughs> you know, see, we're the gonna number beat twelve you coming up. Yeah. Elon, we're gonna beat you. <laughs> oh, that's, that's made in Michigan. You know, you guys in California, in California, you don't know about frogs that freeze. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they don't have those frogs. Tell you what, I was on Isle Royal and we had to actually bathe in Lake Superior water. So let me tell you, there was a human freezing that day. Oh, so cold. Oh, yeah, the Colorado oh. River. Like, it was like 40 degrees or something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's glacial melt. Oh, hell yeah, it's really cold. So, uh, so Gus, thoughts on Mexico? You're familiar with what's about to happen there. Well, you know, again, you know, I think, well, you know, Canada was a uh, leader, you know, I mean, they've led that. I think Mexico is just following Canada, but they'll figure it out. They'll, they will legalize cannabis. I mean, they already have a, you know, an ongoing massive drug, tra illegal drug trafficking business. Uh, you know, they'll be turning it into legal one way or another. And then, um, you know, they, they will take over the, the, the market in South America because if we don't move, they'll move. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you, do you, I mean, you, you're, you originally hail from Colombia, is that right? Colombia, yes. You, it, it, like that, things like this are no stranger to, you know, to that area. 
to that country? Is that going to be joining? Uh, to what to what degree does it join that? So Colombia has a very very advanced uh, cannabis legalization laws, maybe a little bit more advanced than the than the U.S. So actually, uh, cannabis is legal in the whole country. So the, uh, so there is a a government program that handles what you can grow and what you cannot grow. That that program, unfortunately, is being advised by the Canadians. Okay, and the Canadians are largely the ones who are uh, bringing the technology, you know, taking the technology to Colombia, and uh, and that's unfortunate because the Canadians are not that sophisticated. You know, Canadians, you know, actually the Canadians cannabis enterprise, I think, is largely stems from you know illegal, you know, cannabis operations. Uh, the small then farmers suddenly, in Canada have started, produced good cannabis. The commercial farmers, traditionally, it's, I'm sure it's gotten better, but traditionally have not. Yeah, but, you know, but we have, you know, in, ter in terms of technology, we have a lot better technology in the U.S. than Canada. And in terms of creativity, I mean, nobody, nobody in the world beats the U.S. You know, I mean... We can run circles around the Canadians as soon as we have the leashes removed from us. You know, I mean, it's like the Canadians, and they're, they're no match for us. You know, the, the creativity, you know, once we start to collaborate, you know, like nobody in the world is a match for, for USA when it comes to creativity, technology, scientific development. So, um, you know, I mean, that that that's that would be the ideal world, you know, the U.S. are leading. But right now, the the deal is the ca Canadians are are leading, and Canadians are the ones who are essentially directing what's happening in this country. So they they're telling Mexico what to do, they're telling Colombia what to do. Okay, not necessarily the best thing. So they'll be yes, trading with each other in other countries, and we'll still be sitting it out. Uh, for yeah, I mean, no, I mean, what what we need to do is, I mean, we need to get our acts together, you know, and boom. We just need to do that, you know. It's like we just need to do that. We need to do that now, you know. Now is the time. It's, you know, it's not for tomorrow. It's for today, you know. And it's not just again. It's not just uh, you know smoking weed. You know, it's about everything, everything that you can get out of cannabis. That's what I mean. Like it, it, uh, as we were discussing earlier, it doesn't get much priority. I mean, it is, it is evolving. It is moving forward, but it doesn't get much priority. But it nah. seems. Like I have this perspective of how it taps into things that we've talked about, things on a molecular level. We talked about going into space, you know, it touches everything in between. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just can't wait for it to happen fast enough, especially, you know, at the University of Michigan. I want, I want them to let me grow, you know, let me plant hemp, let Gus plant, let me plant hemp. So then I can really go out there and start making things happen at the university. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to be raising, my goal is to raise $400 million a year exclusively for cannabis research. Okay, this is all money that hopefully will be, I mean, to give you an idea, the, the, the medical uh, center at, at UOPAM, you know, the whole medical center, their budget is around $400 million a year. So it would be equivalent to running a third of the university's research enterprise, but exclusively directed at technology and science that would come out of cannabis. Okay. And, and yes, and the ultimate idea is to beat Elon Musk. I mean, and we have, we're competing <laughs> We're competing directly with him for, for talent, for students, okay? Because if we don't do this, we're going to go the way of the dinosaurs. Does and, and, and this money comes by way of uh, university funding or other source out there that would want to support? Yeah, I mean, this Elon Musk, Elon Musk may, may realize, hey, you know, like this guy, Rosania, maybe he does have a point. You know, maybe it's foolish of me to just be developing rockets to send toilet paper so that, you know, my buddies that are going to come with me have something to clean, to wipe ourselves with. You know, it's like, that's how he's thinking, you know. <laughs> Maybe he needs to be a little bit more advanced. You know, so, so you know, Maybe so, he has he to say, hey, you know, this guy was saying, maybe he's not a bad guy, you know. 
I, I do have to I do have to say, Gus, it would certainly be nice for the university to put out some sort of study with their name on it that wasn't shit canning weed all the time. Because for the last 20 years, all we've heard out of the university are these studies that keep talking about social use and how horrible it is. And yeah, a couple of good ones. Ohm of Madison participated in. Yeah, so we're split by, by, by and large, this, but this is a recent thing because before 1970, it used to be that it was quite acceptable to study cannabis for what it was and not for the government's propaganda campaign. But because of the Controlled Substances Act, then, you know, cannabis became a Schedule One substance. And then the National Institute of Drug Abuse was the one in charge of funding all the cannabis studies. And you know our, our budget largely comes from the federal government. You know, so a significant amount of the research budget comes from the federal government. And at that point, all the funding that's available to study cannabis is to study it in the context of drug abuse and drug toxicity. So, um, so anybody who wants to be hired to teach anything related to cannabis, okay, hey, it has to be something, someone who who can somehow bring money to the university, because otherwise this person won't be a competitive faculty member. Uh, and it would be looked down upon. So that, that's just the way academia works. And uh, you have to bring in money. You have to bring in money. So if, if your only source of money is to show that cannabis is bad, okay, then yes, everybody you're going to get to be a faculty member that's successful is going to be saying, oh, cannabis is bad. Cannabis is bad. But, uh, but eventually, I think that's, that's going to change. That, and that's going to change with hemp legal now. And I think it's going to change with these kinds of uh, you know, different kinds of visions that not necessarily involve saying, oh, cannabis is good because, you know, it, it cures disease, but it's not just because it cures disease, but because it actually cures everything that ails us. <laughs> it puts us on the right track, you know, the right mental track, the right vision, you know, restore what connections is- with Mother Earth. One of the things I like to point out is that Michigan had one of the first medical marijuana laws back in the um, early 80s. It was co-signed by uh, eventual Governor Engler. And the program was a great program. However, the federal government, of course, prevented any medical marijuana from being available to anybody who would have been in the program. Um, So we've been on the forefront here in the state of Michigan for generations, and it's always been some outside forcing us back. Hey, we we decriminalized first, right? Hash bash, hash bash, right? The Supreme Court ruling that said John Sinclair fee eliminated all of the cannabis laws in Michigan for about six months or so. Exactly. Right, but hash bash, hash bash was a fuck you to the man. Hash bash is about you can pass any law you want, and we're still going to smoke weed. That's what hash bash has always been about. It's a I mean, you kept it alive. You know, you, 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 kept, you kept the flame alive. You know, you kept the flame alive. You carried the torch all the way through. And, and you could argue that maybe if you didn't have hash bash, you know, the, the legalization movement would be absolutely nowhere. Like we wouldn't be here. That's I mean, we're, we could have possibly lost oh, cannabis, and we, we could have lost that. everything. <laughs> I mean, you know, we could have lost everything. We could have lost everything, everything, psilocybin. You know, everything we could have lost if we would have lost cannabis. I mean, the only thing that kept that kept those other uh, fungus and and uh, you know and barks and herbs and whatever alive was cannabis. It's the only thing because everything else would was dwindling. It it, it 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 just dwindled out, you know. So, I mean, you could you could you could possibly make that argument. So, I mean, I don't know how you prove it, how you show it, but I bet you, if you think about it, I bet you, you know, you you could possibly make that argument. Well, I think so. I mean, you could. could... Could you convince somebody some particular uh, uh, composition of effect that it had on, you know, where we are or whatever, but just being around during the time and understanding what happened leading up to where we are now, uh, I know that that uh, 
that that annual event was very important. Yeah. And, and oh. Anna was responsible for keeping it uh, afloat for many years and perpetuating it into the uh, into the new world. I mean, it, stretches of moving to where it, we I'm, are now. I'm not looking to take anything away from the efforts of the my legalized people, but had the PRA not happened when it happened and gone to hash bash and started that volunteer effort, I don't know that it would have been up to speed it was when the MI Legalize uh, finally uh, uh, hit up. Um, I think right that in Michigan, Hash Bash is a very unique event for us um, to the fact that, it, to the point that it's known worldwide and it's, um, it's ego and it's, it's uh, um, persona is much bigger than reality that makes any sense yeah, yeah. i mean I, you know, i've heard for years from people how well hash bash is a day that you can come to ann arbor and smoke weed and they won't arrest you and i always thought that was funny because that's never been the case <laughs> <laughs> yep so uh yeah, i was kind of breaking up there with Adam a little bit, but uh, also we talked about earlier, there was repeal today that came after that. Yeah. And then there was the first go around with MI Legalize that came up short and then this last one. So we've, we've, thousands of people over decades kicked off with a lot of the, the, the John C. Clear uh, 10 for two yeah. situation. And I mean, I would argue you might not have even heard of Rainbow Farms had they not shown up at Ashbash. Yeah. Well, the, the fact is, there are just so very few opportunities for our community to gain the attention of media or to draw people to our state from others uh, for a special party. Hashbash has been, you know, the reason for people to assemble in Michigan. So a lot of folks either made connections at Hashbash or uh, gained some attention from their appearance at Hashbash, who normally would have just toiled in anonymity. Proof. I, I think I think what would be really interesting would be some interviews of the luminaries of the movement, you know, and, and the breeders, uh, you know, these the, these guys from California. What's their name? The Art View, uh, you know, what was the name? Uh, the guy with the ponytail and the hat. Stephen uh, D'Angelo. Stephen. Yeah, D'Angelo. Yeah, yeah, D'Angelo. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we need to. You know, like interview people so that it's not just us here, you know, like, oh, yeah, hash is the greatest thing in the world. But, you know, interview people from the outside, from California, and, and you know, maybe get their perspective as to how hash bash influenced, you know, the, the movement and the, you know, the, the maintenance of, uh, you know, the momentum of the cannabis momentum. And, you know, that perspective, I think, would be really interesting. Uh, maybe for the next, maybe for, for the next hash bash. You know, maybe that there's an actually Mark Passerini. We could we could uh, mention it. I don't know who's going to organize it, but he's been mentioned. He's been organizing it. But you know, get that perspective from people in the outside. Uh, also, the, the you know, like the local readers, uh, DJ Shorts. Maybe uh, we we should ask him like what what impact in terms of breeding the kind of you know the, the people. I don't know who the who the main people in uh, like the high time to keep, keep track of all the breeds and you know varieties are but you know like start tapping into people who are not in Michigan and get input as to what is the actual significance of hash bash you know well, from the outs from an outside that's interesting yeah you know a lot of people from from out of state have wanted to come and participate that's for sure one of the things you need to know is at one point there was only three weed events in the country really for many so many years the, the 4th of July smoke-in in, in uh, Washington, D.C., the Hash Bash, and the Madison Harvest Festival. Harvest Fest, yeah. In Wisconsin. Um, and yeah, and that was it for years. And then so things like the Seattle Hemp Fest came up, and, you know, but that took, that took things like uh, legalization and, and, and stuff to happen in order for, for them to uh, 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 come out and, and, and have an event. Uh, our events for many, many years were protests. So at those events, you would get the people who would show up because they knew 
that was the place to meet the other activists and the other, you know, uh, growers and people like that. And, and I can't tell you how many people um, I've met over the years who I didn't know who they were until years later, come to find out they're some major grower. But for years, they were just popping their head in saying hello, you know, just good. Well, so, so now, now people, you know, like the big names would be people like uh, Snoop Dogg, I think Snoop Dogg is a big name. Uh, Mike Tyson now is a big name. Uh, Willie Nelson, Jim Belushi. So, you know, the other thing is asking these people, I mean, because, you know, they, they become the big names, but they, they obviously were not the ones who were there carrying the flag, you know. It's like asking these people, like, where do they get, you know, where do they come from? You know, like, where does Snoop Dogg come from? You know, and, and how does he get there? And then whoever he says, figure out where they come from. I mean, well, Cheech and Chong, obviously. You know, so have they have any of these people been at Hash Bash? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Tommy so, Chong, we brought him in 2000. It started. Okay. Um, yeah. Most of these people you should know, though, Gus, most of the people you mentioned, they're happy to show up at Hash Bash if we pay their appearance fee. Right. And they will oh, not God. show up for any other reason. <laughs> Yep. That's sad. Well, that's sad. Maybe maybe they just they're just ignorant that's, people. I mean, well, that's the what they well, are. You know, they, I'll, they are I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you, Gus, because I like you. Okay, I'm honest because I'm honest. But the reality is what I just heard from you is pretty grandiose in the eyes of what I think is the average weed activist, because the names you mentioned, many of us look at them and laugh. Yeah, well, but they're you the ones know. that are carrying the market, you know, the, the large. Say, but, but you should know that when Steve D'Angelo was brought in to speak at Hash Bash, they paid for him to fly first class. Hash Bash paid for him to fly first class. He took in $32 million that year and didn't have uh, a foundation and doesn't have a foundation set up so that he can go around and proselytize. Yeah, so, so maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> no, no, it's a great idea. It's probably, it's probably well taken regardless of the, of the people. No, because point the is thing well is, taken. they're going to lie. I mean, the, the bottom line is they're going to lie, okay? Because when you make money the priority, you know, then truth is, is secondary. And, and you really don't want to be lied by people. You know, it's like, because, you know, they're going to lie to you because of the money. Because if you tell me, you know, this is the kind of people they are, you know, if you're willing to actually acknowledge this, uh, you know, then I would say, well, you know, you, you can't trust people like this. You know, I mean, you say you really but have to, the industry. to, you know, well, you, you really have to, well, you know, there has to be some good people out there. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, John Lennon was here. <laughs> I mean, wasn't he? <laughs> well, yeah, he came, he came because his buddy Jerry Rubin asked him to come because there was this tragedy called John Sinclair. So yeah, those, well. that back then there were true activists. The problem is, and I point this out regularly, my movement that I worked so hard for has become an industry. And now yeah. you see industry players and the names you mentioned, every one of them is an industry player. One of them's a convicted rapist, but the rest of them are industry players. And right. in, the modern, in the modern era, people don't know the difference between the two is the reality. And people yeah. think that, you know, we should have Snoop Dogg come and play an hour set at our event because now we can put Snoop Dogg on our poster. In the meantime, you just hired a DJ for $30,000 for an hour. Yeah. That's, yeah, and, well, yeah, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. So... But may, maybe the world will change because of COVID, you know. So next hash bash, people will be a, a lot more grounded, you know. Uh, you know, if they, they may have to acknowledge that there is more important things than money, especially, you know, if it turns out that money doesn't have as much value as, as they thought it would because, you know, they can't travel. <laughs> they can't. They okay. can't. <laughs> Join this is what I got crowds. to tell you, Gus, about next hash bash. Okay. At this point, at this point right now, the university will not be handing out permits 
Hash Bash will be a protest next year, as it always was and as it always will be. Permit or not, I encourage you to show up. And what? it's the one thing that under COVID we are allowed to do. We are still allowed to come out and protest. Oh. We can socially distance and we can protest. So I encourage everybody, April 3rd, 2021, will be the 50th annual Ann Arbor Ash Bash. I encourage you all to show up and permit or not, I'll be there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll have to see till that day comes. So I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm gonna be yeah, there. These days that, you that don't year. know what's gonna happen for real. I, I, I <laughs> Yeah, who knows? You know, I may be in church there. praying on my knees. Really Oops. hoping to be there, but God knows what's going to happen around here. Who knows? Well, yeah. all I can tell you is that the university at this point is not permitting permitted events. They already are saying that, huh? No, we're in the so next they, year. They, with they, the, canceled, the they canceled, they stopped issuing permits back in February uh, or March, I believe, of, of this year. Yeah. And, uh, they, they will not permit any oh. events, um, but that's okay because it's a hash bash. It's a protest. It's not right. a permit's not needed. And uh, yeah. of course, I also uh, encourage folks to show up on April 1st for the true anniversary of the hash bash. But that's another story. For another I mean, show. As long as we're not the scapegoat, you know, as long as we're not the scapegoat for the COVID, and as long as, yeah, we don't get the blame for the deaths, you know, but... I mean, we, we are now an essential, what, an essential business, you know, so, so all that's good. I mean, it's like, right, I mean, what, what more, what more than that? I mean, what, 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 what greater thing? They, 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 they call it an essential business. And, and, and yes, it's very much an essential business. You know, it keeps people at home, keeps them, you know, without fighting with each other and going insane and turning to alcohol or other, <laughs> uh, you know, nastier. Direct you no know, lethal drugs, you know? Direct, I mean, di right? Director Brisbo, I heard him on an interview today talking about um, during COVID, the uh, amount of uh, sales in Michigan and how it had spiked. And he <laughs> said, it's because people are staying at home during COVID and they're choosing to spend their money on products like marijuana. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So 440 million. Yep. Something, uh, I believe. I was high. I couldn't remember the number, but it was crazy. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. And, and the reality is. Yeah, that's how that, much Gus needs to fund his uh, research program. Well, there Perfect. you go. The, the reality is that we told them there'd be money, and now they see the money. And we also are starting to see a lot of these communities who said no realized oops we should have said yes and now they're behind the eight ball and now they're trying quickly to catch up and they're opting in the best way they can of course they're opting in with their so-called ordinances and whatnot but. yeah actually i just want to mention you know i don't i don't really care about government money i mean i i, I go after government money because that's where it's it, it's come from because industry doesn't want to give a cent but you know it should be really industry that should be funding us because Indeed. we're training, we're training their people. Okay, they just don't appreciate what we do, you know. But we're That's really good. providing, you know, training services for whoever goes and works with them, and uh, they're taking advantage of, of of everybody. They take advantage of us. They take advantage of the government. You know, they take advantages of the people that we're training. You know, the industry. You know, and for what purpose? To put the money in the bank. Right to have these super valuations of uh, companies that we're seeing right now in the stock market, which make absolutely no sense. You know, no, they, they have to. You know, industry has to invest in us. You know, it has to invest in people because sooner or later, I mean, like everybody knows, it's a hard, it's it's a house of cards that they're building. You know, because all this money is just paper. It's just paper. And if there's nothing underneath, you know, nothing underneath, it's all going to collapse. It's all going to collapse. And, uh, and hopefully, hopefully they decide to invest soon. I mean, this is really what I'm looking forward to. This is really what I, I want to see happen. You know, I want them to realize, and I think they will very soon, 
that unless they start investing in people, okay, they're going to be the biggest losers. They're going to have nothing. They're going to be left with nothing. Because all these stock market valuations at the end of the day, if there is nothing underneath, if there's no people to support it, you just cannot possibly justify it. You, you, it's, it's impossible. Impossible. You know, they just, they don't have the, you know, there is not the, the human power. There's not the intellectual human power to turn all this money that people have put into the, all these companies, all these tech companies into the products that people would see them developing. You know, there's just, where is it going to come from? Yeah. You know, where is it going to come from? You know, it's like, you know, it's like, Especially, you know, you shut the borders to India and China. You know, it used to be, look, China's got like 1 billion people. India's got 1 billion people, okay? You know, for people to do math, okay, doing math is like people who play, uh, you know, who know how to play football or baseball and play it well. You know, like you put me to play baseball or football, forget it, okay? I mean, look, I, you know, like I was a nerd in high school, you know, and we got nerds and we got jobs, okay? <laughs> And and it only I mean it's like you only get one of you know one or the other I mean there's people with other talent with music with you know whatever you know like you dress funny you dress great you know you look you know you're beautiful you're popular you know everybody's got a different talent okay but when it comes to producing technology you know whether it's spaceships whether it's uh, cell phones or whatever apps you know you need a certain kind of talent and I just don't see I mean I just can't see how they're gonna get that talent. I just, I just, you know, especially if, they, if they're shutting down immigration, you know, mm -hmm. if they shut down immigration, where is it going to come from? You know? Well, if it's, if the, we're talking about multinational corporations, they may be considering a non-American source of all this talent. Pfizer moving to China, as you mentioned earlier, yeah, but means that they, 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 have, they shut off American talent and they, they use only Chinese to do those things. No, they, they have no creativity there, Rick. And, and maybe it has to do with how much uh, cannabis we use here, you know. But, you know. Cannabis gives us but, the edge. Yes. Yeah. You know, but, so, Gus, when uh, you say that uh, that uh, nobody has the type of creativity as we do here in the U.S., that's in part because we draw people from all over the world to cooperate. And Yeah, that's 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 true. It's the, communi it's the ability to communicate the, uh, the acceptance of each other. And, uh, yes, the, 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 the way that we... Um, you know, that we're able to deal with each other's differences. I mean, believe it or not, Americans can actually do it. Yeah. I mean, look at the I mean, creativity displayed on, on Deb's background. I mean, it's just, that's that's an amazing level of, of artistic yeah. endeavor. You, you notice I cropped, I cropped the head so nobody would really know who it was. <laughs> you got my chest right, though. You got my chest right. People are going to be able to tell by that. Um, yeah. yeah, well, certain people will. Perhaps they are in the gym. <laughs> yes, yes, we've been talking for a long time. It's about time to wrap up the segment. Did you want right. to? How could people well, get a hold of you? What, Jamie? Well, sir, I just wanted to, uh, I mean, I don't, we're almost going to get close to just wrapping up the show. As long as you want to hang out, you know, we're fine for, for winding down. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, true, you know, we kind of, we kind of, you know, went on for a little while, but I think it's all been really interesting. We covered a lot of ground. I've enjoyed this. Sure, yeah. We haven't talked about, and we did talk about it on Medical Monday, uh, the diaper Don scenario. <laughs> Why? Why you gotta I changed my opinion on that, by the way. Okay, let's hear okay. it. I'm willing to talk about the background the a little bit. It's pants. <laughs> Please don't. Oh, so gross. Wow. And, and so with, with the professor, you want to bring that up? Okay, that's great. <laughs> Apparently, he wears a diaper and he shits a lot, particularly when he gets mad. I did. I did go do some research on that, and I did see the videos and the pictures, and um, it is a very disturbing fact. It's it's full out shitting, or is it just like streaking? Like you know, nope. it's full out shitting. Wow! Enough to have to wear a diaper. Apparently, whatever. That's pretty uh, intense. It's part of, it's, he learned it, it. It appears he learned it while doing some wrestling uh, gigs. Because it's ah, not common in the wrestling industry to wear a diaper. Yeah, I've heard that. You get the shit beat out of you. Yep. Wow. Colin, Colin, your thoughts on uh, diaper Don? Oh. I mean, I believe it. I, uh, I, I'm surprised it didn't. It took this long to get it out. 
Well, it, convinced, it convinced uh, Adam. He did a little bit of research, confirmed it. Now he's willing to. Uh, I didn't disbelieve it. I just try not to. I have. I have minimal respect for the office of the presidency. So I, but I, I but that to, particular person holding it has. I so want it to be true. Don't you? To, I really want that. To deserve to be true. that. The office still deserves respect, but. The, no, I know, Jamie, but, you know, the reality is this is our first swearing president, and uh, he's done a lot for the country, for those of us that like to swear. He's done a lot for uh, the people who like to use Twitter. He, he, he got Twitter to increase the amount of characters we can use. He made it so having a first lady who posed naked and yeah. uh, came from a foreign country is not a problem. I mean, basically, he's vagina. made everything I like in life great, except for weed. And if he legalized weed, I'd probably go push Biden out of the way. Yeah, he's made still it got okay. a couple weeks. He paid, made it okay to pay porn stars for sex and, and then to shut up about it too yeah his, that was always that not, was always not, okay right if nothing else his colossal failure on the response to the pandemic is, is good enough to not I, yeah. I that. That. yeah i mean we, we yeah. were talking about important stuff <laughs> but then jim, the, at that jim familiar with the diaper don scenario were you were you Still don't out of the area for the conversation do you have any thoughts on that um i don't have uh much to comment on with that so <laughs> All right, Gus. Everybody's got their issues. Oh, Gus, oh. diaper down. No, no comment. No comment. <laughs> you understand <laughs> what's being discussed? No, I, I don't know. I don't think I need to understand. The title itself should be. The title itself should tell you exactly what this whole subject is about. Don't yeah. go there. That's okay. You know, yes. I'll. You know, I'll write through it. I'll wait to I'll wait to read a book. You know, a couple of years from now, some White House insider will write a book about you know, Mike Pence wiping him or something. <laughs> hey, I've often said Mike Pence is a tiny brained wiper of other people's bottoms. I just never really knew how true. Is that, true is that why they, is that why the fly was attracted to the top of his head? That's oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. Not going there. He's like scratching himself on the head. I think part of he's so pale, part of him might actually be dead and it's actually rotting and their flies are being attracted to it, but I don't know. It's very vampiric. It's very. No, I think that was very important to get in. Now I think we can start closing up a uh, segment, Murphy. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gus, please, edit, anything? Edit, to, edit, uh, out. edit, edit, edit. To leave us with, uh, direct people to make people aware of. Uh, well, so I'm, I'm a University of Michigan faculty member. I'm very accessible. I want to work with people. Uh, you know, cannabis is my passion. I want to legalize every plant and uh, fungi, uh, you know, that Mother Earth has produced. I think it's only fair to, uh, to Mother Earth and to, uh, you know, and to the, uh, the future and of humankind, you know, to our children, to you know, to uh, put the planet back on uh, on the right track, you know, to start thinking about, um, you know, life uh, in terms of happiness, peace, love, you know, the important things and not just money and material objects, which we all know they, they really don't lead to happiness because, you know, we have to find happiness from within. Um, you know, I, I am looking for money. I'm looking for very big money. I want to put that money towards our future, okay? Uh, but my life, I mean, I, I, I derive great pleasure actually in, in, in work, you know, so, so money is absolutely secondary to me. Uh, cannabis and plants and the fungi, you know, and the education that comes with it uh, is what's number one. And, you know, I... I know, I know happiness. I, I've got happiness and love and peace from within. I've um, I tapped into all that myself very deeply. So, you know, I am unwavering in terms of my, uh, my belief because I've actually experienced the truth. Uh, so with that said, you know, I'm around and uh, University of Michigan, G. Rosania at UMH.edu. You can find my email online and obviously Jamie, Rick, you know, you all know everybody, you know, you'll know where I am, Facebook, Instagram. So, yep, get in touch with me. So, I love you all. Yeah, Thank a, lot, you a lot of interesting stuff. Appreciate you coming on, man. It was a, <laughs> a cool
cool conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Adam, likewise, uh, thanks for coming on. And what do you, what would you like to leave us with today? I appreciate you inviting me. Um, I'm easily found on all forms of social media. I do a morning Facebook live show, uh, Dab and Stab with Adam. It's kind of fun. We give away prizes guessing my morning blood glucose number. It's the most asinine thing you've ever heard, but we do it while getting high. So everybody's uh, entertained. Um, so check me out, find me there. Uh, other than that, you know, I'm out there. I'm easily found. Just smoke signals is the best way to find me. <laughs> Jim, got anything uh, you need to get in before we sign off? Uh, no, not really. Everybody, you know, keep it real. Stay healthy. Um, you know, and breathe. Just breathe. <sighs> Thank you, Jim. Good call. Yeah. I do have it on mute. Yeah. Colin. Yeah, I was just showing you off to other people. So, did you say? Um, Colin, I got nothing really. Okay. Just uh -huh. echoing what Jim says breathe. Okay. Uh, I'll stay okay, safe. Good deal. Deb, what about you? It looks like that coffee cup. It's so close to the camera. It looks like a cauldron in front of you, like you're. It's, it's <laughs> unusually large to begin with. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Comes. Everybody, just, Gross. everybody, yes. just stay yeah. level, stay calm, and we'll roll on through this. Mm -hmm. So, Brown, if you if you're feeling a little down, just look at Deb's background. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm going to keep this one for a while. It, it was really hard to obtain it again. Let me tell you. Yes, you, know, so you understand yeah. that's a that's a cartoon of Rick and myself behind. Oh, the, I see. Yeah, I, just, I, I only yeah. see from the uh, neck down. I didn't see. Well, it. that's the only part that count. Come on. I, I just see. Be able to, <laughs> I want that design on a shirt. Yeah. I want that on a shirt. Yeah, yeah. But I got to get permission right. from Ben. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would just steal it. I don't have to get anything from Ben. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I have his kids. Yep. So I, I uh, do a, a podcast each week called 420 Post on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. You can find us on Facebook. That's a business-centric podcast I do with Mike Brennan and uh, Jamie Cooper. So you can take a look for that. Of course, we're, we do the Medical Mondays thing. Berg was on earlier today. and It's a 9 p.m. thing. You can always tune in with Ryan Bass or Smoke. Uh, smoke. No, no smoke, 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 smoke and Rope. Smoke and rope. rope. I always want to say, you know, Smith. Hey, Russ, Russ Chambers from Botanical Company was on the last one. That's a good one. I watched it. Oh, yeah, Russ is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's always great, too. There's lots of podcasts out there. Uh, but more importantly, we get the Michael Thompson thing. Uh, there's a potential parole board decision coming up maybe sometime in December. Uh, December 6th, there's a Michigan Normal broadcast celebrating the two-year anniversary of legalization. Hope everyone will participate in that. Adam Brooke is a board member of normal of Michigan as I am, and we will be broadcasting live uh, for a couple of hours just to have some fun. Uh, and of course, there's lots of ways to support your neighbors during this holiday season. Make sure that you check on those people that, that live alone and uh, help the people that are sad this season. Right on. That's about it. Really appreciate yeah. the show again. A lot of interesting stuff. Thanks, everybody. And... Uh, do it again next week.